Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Happy Even After podcast. I am here today with Rachel Ross Smith. Rachel is a transformational coach and founder of the Consciousness Collective, which she just launched. She speaks openly about struggling with anxiety and depression in her past, but now she is a spiritual entrepreneur and she is in England. So no matter what we talk about today, it is going to sound brilliant because her accent is so cool. (laughs) So welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. I've been really excited for this podcast and excited for what I can offer you guys over this next uh, hour. Uh, Half hour. So we're going to get get a lot in. That's okay. So what what really excited me about um, when you and I connected was the topic of really diving into something that kind of makes people uncomfortable. And this, this whole concept of being spiritual. Um, And I've always considered myself a very spiritual person, but I don't follow any sort of defined um, religion. So um, sometimes when you start talking about spirituality, people feel like it's a little woo-woo and they kind of get shifty about it. So let's talk about that and what what is the work that you do as it, it is in the spiritual space? Yeah, fantastic. So this is a great question. I'm really excited we're speaking about it because you're right. There's so many people shut off that part of themselves because they think they perceive it as Mm -hmm. woo-woo. So I'm really excited to speak about this. It's something I'm so passionate about. And just to give you guys a little introduction to to what I do um, before I dive into this conversation is I'm a manifestation and transformation coach. Um, I describe myself as a self-love advocate. Um, I describe myself as a life lover. I'm very passionate about traveling and a complete fitness junkie as well. Um, And I'm absolutely here to support individuals to raise their consciousness and step into their truth because I've had my own experiences with that and worked with so many clients now, mainly women, but some guys too, who have just completely transformed their life in such a short space of time by accessing the parts of themselves that they didn't even know were there and um, tapping into the parts of themselves like their conscious awareness, like their spirit. Spirituality. So I'm really, really passionate about it. My accent, so I'm in London. Um, I am Scottish, so you'll hear the Scottish, um, although it has softened a bit since I moved to London. So yeah, just to kick that off, I first of all just want to start off by giving everybody a love punch. And what I mean by that is that you're missing out on something by putting spirituality into a category. And you're totally right. You know, I don't consider myself having one religion, having some one spiritual practice. But what I've become aware of and what I now teach is that we all have an inner power, which some people refer to as spirituality. But this inner power is bigger than what we've been taught. It's bigger than most of us are aware of. And do you know what? When you learn to tap into that a little bit more, a whole world's going open up to you and you're also going to connect to what the power is that you have as a human being and that is a power of infinite potential that is a power a power of limitless possibilities that is a power of being connected and guided by something bigger than each one of us as an individual but when you can learn to tap into that and harness that power um, you've got a whole different perspective on life and it's a whole different ball game, this thing we called life. So, yeah. So how do you help someone with that? Because you said you can do it in such a, a short period of time. So if someone says, well, I don't know what you're talking about, um, what, do you say to, what do you say to that and how do you help them? Yeah, and I just want to remind you guys, like as you mentioned in my introduction, you know, I've come from a place where anxiety and depression was a huge part of my journey, you know, from a very young age. And I would say even just before my teens, it was something that was affecting me. Now, this affected me, my mental health, um, the, the, the diagnosed anxiety and depression, the label that I'd been given affected me, you know, right through my teens, 20s. And it was only four years ago that I consider myself having a breakthrough. So I just want to to, um, let you guys know that, you know, this has not always been something I've been aware of. Now, I've always been aware that I've maybe had um, 
gifts or being able to really like lead people, like really, really gauge people's energy. I've always been aware of that. But what I'm doing now, you know, I had no clue. I had no clue. So I first of all, just want to say that it doesn't matter where you are right now. And my mental health, you know, it was at the point for a lot of my teens and 20s where I didn't want to be in this world. I did not want to be here. Like that's how dark my journey was at points. Um, and I know that's something we're going to speak about as we go forward. So again, I just want to reiterate to you, you know, it does not matter where you are today or, or what journey you've been on. The, the important thing is about starting to understand and, and become aware of, of where you're at now. Now, this is a huge conversation, but I guess what I'd like to offer you today is that whether you look at it as spirituality or conscious awareness or whatever you want to call it, it's really all coming back to the same thing. You know, we speak about God and, and the universe and the divine and source and infinite intelligence and all these names. But what I've learned along the way and why I've chosen not to take one as mine, um, I've learned that it's all the same thing, just a different terminology. Yeah, people have put different stories on it and, you know, different spins on it. But actually what it comes down to is it's all the same thing. So what I'm really passionate about speaking about and sharing with you is that we, it's been scientifically proven as well, you know, we as beings have the power to create our life through our thoughts, feelings, and actions. And that's it. And so what I'd say to you, because I know the question was, how can people start gauging this? The first point I would say to you is become open to the possibilities mm -hmm. because if you're saying that woo woo stuff like that's you know that's not for me yeah. you've already got a wall up but what about you just engage with it a little bit what about you just take a peek and see what's there so i would say to you first step is start to become aware and open to it um you know there's amazing people out there i'm really passionate about speaking about it and there is hundreds of others that you can tap into through podcasts reading instagram uh, youtube and um, books I would definitely turn to just start to become aware. Third thing I'll offer you as well is practice silence. Start to practice silence through meditation, through visualization, through just sitting quiet, you know, cutting out the noise, putting your phone to the side, putting the laptop away, getting rid of the emails and just start to practice tuning into yourself. Um, now meditation is my biggest tip and you know before I knew about any of this stuff that I was speaking about that I'm speaking about now four years ago meditation for me was a real key starting point because what meditation did is it started to make me aware of my thoughts for one and um, the power that I had over my thoughts and then when I started tuning into my thoughts I started to become aware of how what I was thinking about and what I was visualizing and what I was setting as intention was starting to come into my reality. And then I realized through this process, I was like, ha, huh, something's happening here. I'm thinking about things, I'm setting intentions, and then things are coming into my life. But it's just before, if you remember, I was stuck in a, a really dark place. So through this experience, I started to realize, and then of course, back that up with a lot of research, coaching, um, mentorship, and took a deep dive into it. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, and you know, in, in terms of the books, there are, I think there are so many books out there that all tackle this in a different way. And so for me, I read um, You're a Badass and yes. Spirit Junkie. And mm -hmm. so the message and the theme was so similar, but they, each author approached it in such a different way. So I think that there's a fit out there. You know, you have to find what you're comfortable with and the language that you're comfortable with too. Absolutely. And there are two of the books that I, I started with as well. Um, you know, Gabby Bernstein, Universe Has Your mm -hmm. Back, The Secret. We all know about The Secret, yeah. which speaks about the law of attraction. Um, you know, there's, we're going to speak about the laws I know, but it's like that book for me, you know, I really, I can remember going through it and starting to see things happen in my life. But you can even take a deeper dive into people like Napoleon Hill, Neville, you know, all of these great authors, um, Think and Grow Rich, you've probably heard of, which is Napoleon Hill. Um, Neville's one of my favorite authors. Like these are guys from like way back in the day, you know, they're, they've been gone a long time, but actually 
this conversation was happening a long time ago. It's, it's always been around. It's just kind of been silenced a bit. Um, but it's really making, I'm so glad to see what's happening in the world now. You know, it's, it's becoming a conversation more streamlined, which is so important because we have, we have more power than, we are, than we're aware of. We have way more power than we're aware of. So I just really want to encourage you guys to start to open up to that possibility. And I love that you make such a great point because right now you look around and it seems like, oh, it's trendy, but this is not trendy. I mean, this is something that has it's hundreds of years, if not more, has really been um, looked at and examined. And so they were on to something back then. You know, it's so great. So you brought up the laws of attraction. And I think that this, this is such like an easy quick fix way you know like everyone wants like the quick fix and like oh okay i'm gonna open myself up to this world well i want to see something happen i want the payoff and i think for me this is kind of like the the payoff that you start to see immediately and so can you talk a little bit about what the law of attraction is and how does someone implement some of that into their life today yeah, sure. So I just want to first touch on as well, because the law of attraction from the secret, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, one of the universal laws that we all have some awareness or most of us have some awareness of. But I just want to highlight to you, first of all, there is loads of universal laws out there. There's some people say there's hundreds, um, but there's a book. Um, so I've done a lot of studying with the Proctor Gallagher Institute, Bob, Bob Proctor's work. I really encourage you guys to tap into him, you know, Manifestation Babes. Um, there's another really awesome, um, quite old book as well called Working With The Law um, by a, an author called Raymond Taylor. And he is incredible. So I just want to first of all say that we're going to speak about law of attraction today, but I want to make you guys aware that there is so many universal laws that you can work Work with um, you know law of increase being one of my favorite that understanding of everyone you come into contact with leave up the leave them with the feeling of increase and then how that then reflects back into your life and honestly since I started applying that in my life and in my business it's been game-changing okay it, so tell me a little bit more about that because I'm interested yeah, sure. So the law of increase is literally, to, to in a nutshell, that each individual that you come into contact with, you leave them with the feeling of increase. Now, this can be as simple uh, as, um, you know, at, when you're at the shop and you're buying something and you just ask the, the, the person at the till, like, how are you? You know, hi, like, how are you today? Um, I just wanted to let you know that I loved your service, um, you know, leaving them with the, the feeling of increase or in business, maybe it's going that extra bit, you know, above and beyond what you've been doing, whether that's in a conversation, just offering something. If you're doing a sales call, um, go into the sales call with the understanding and the intention that no matter what happens, you're going to leave that person with the feeling of increase. You're going to offer them some value. Oh, Rachel. So I just got like super excited because imagine if, someone going through a divorce and you know they're at odds with their soon-to-be ex and they have to have a co-parenting relationship imagine if parents um adopted that in their co-parenting relationship and how that could transform that that relationship and the communication i mean that's an amazing that's concept transform you're that's such a beautiful example you've just given and imagine that and it takes practice, but I can promise you when you start to apply this as part of you, as your state of being, honestly, you will see your relationships professionally and personally really open up. And it ties back into the law of attraction. You know, the law of attraction is about what you put out there, you're going to get back. Now, I'm going to give you two examples on two different perspectives. Me, I'm going to use myself as an example, actually roll back a few years I just come out of I was I, I've not been married just so you guys know I've not been married but I was engaged to be married it fell apart very close to my wedding I'd been with my um my ex-fiance for my 20s we had a thing when we were in teens like childhood sweethearts um traveled the world together so I haven't gone through the actual divorce process I didn't get the the marriage certificate but we were we were due to be married and we had you know a relationship that was just incredible but ended in a difficult place however we were able to find um forgiveness and love within that and 
I just wanted to offer that as well, just so you kind of know where I'm at in terms of like, because I know we're going to speak more about the sort of relationship side. Um, and you're totally right. And you know what? If you can be taking that into your situations within your personal relationships, especially where there's children, imagine what influence that's going to have on them. That if you take that approach that, you know, whatever's going on, I'm going to leave this person with the feeling of increase, even if it is just a smile or a hello or how are you? Um, or you can go above and beyond that, you know, um, I know how important this is to you or have you considered checking this book or audio out? You know, it can be as simple as that. Um, and I just wanted to offer there, you know, going back to my experience, I was in a really dark place in terms of the law of attraction. Now, what I was doing is I was constantly in a repeated pattern where I was being down on myself. I was looking at life against me. I was caught up in this label that I'd been given in this mental health um, experience that I had going on and so what I was doing is I was constantly every day getting up in the same place like Groundhog Day getting up mm -hmm. so what I was putting out there was that constantly what was I getting back that constantly I had my breakthrough at the end of 2015 I hit rock bottom probably for the I don't know fourth time or something but this had really this was like a deep dive and um, I hit rock bottom but something switched in me and I you know, looking at me, nothing had changed on the outside, but everything had changed on the inside. A whole world had shifted. Um, and what happened in that point, and this wasn't an overnight process, so this has been a journey as it is with us all. But what happened was I started to become aware of myself. I took responsibility for my life. And I started understanding through my research and my own life experiences that what I was putting out there was what I was getting back. So I thought, you know, what if I just started changing up, like how I'm thinking, the, the words I'm using, the language I'm using, you know, how I'm speaking to myself. What if I just started taking little steps each day to change that up? I started practicing gratitude and I started putting out there to the world something different like a different energy that I felt would serve me going forwards and so that's what I did so I hope that it, that example helps but to really summarize you know it's about what you put out there you're gonna get back if you're going about angry and frustrated and mm -hmm. swearing at people and like I'm skinned all the time and this person did this and this they said this that's what you're gonna get back right. you can feel my energy like you're gonna get that back but if you're going out there and you know taking things in your stride and choosing to see gratitude in different situations and in each conversation leaving people with a feeling of increase and starting to practice love and compassion for yourself guess what's going to be reflected back to you so I have to say, we're doing this through Zoom and your energy is so strong right now. And it's just like coming through and I know it's going to transfer to the recording too, but I love that because everything you're, you're saying, like I can, I can feel that, like it, you are radiating that positivity and light and love and, and all of that. So it's so cool. I mean, it really works. And I think it's important that it's not perfect, right? So we're all going to have like bad days. We're all going to get annoyed if someone's like tailgating us and like you're going to have moments and that's okay too. So it's just um, acknowledging that and kind of letting it go and, and moving on and not getting caught up in that, that, that slump or that wheel so that yet, you know, you can get off of it. It's such a good point And I'm so glad you brought this up because I think what can happen, and I went through this as well when I started on my journey, is like you almost feel that it's that worry, that fear of, but what if I'm putting out negativity? And I just, and I was there, you know, in my journey, and I'm so glad we're speaking about this because I was there at one point. I, I almost had this like worry about the, putting the negativity out. And I just want to ask you guys if you're in that place to, to let it go. And you're right, it's about becoming aware of it. So something bad, something challenging's happened in your life. Something challenges happened in your life. The more you can practice just, observing um honoring where you're at because what happens if we're adding like um resistance or a lot of energy to it it grows you know wherever we're putting our focus it's going to grow look at your focus um your intention as your 
seed, a seed. And you know, within this seed, it grows. Um, the seed is always going to grow, but you get to decide what kind of plant it is. And it's nourished and fertilized by our thoughts and our, our attention and the energy that goes into it. So if you find yourself in a challenging place, honor where you're at, take a little moment out, do some meditation, journal it out, find a way to be able to release it from your body in a way that's going to serve you. Um, there's a really awesome um, um, diagram you can check out. It's actually on one of my posts on my social, but you can just Google it, um, the emotional scale. Um, and it's this chart and it's the different emotions. So you've got like contentment in the middle and it goes to positivity, enlightenment and so on. Whereas down below goes like overwhelm. Um, and so what's a really good practice here if you're finding yourself that your emotions are in control of you, because that's what happens, you know, if we're triggered, if something happens, stuff's going to happen. It's life, you know, we're going to be challenged. Um, relationships sometimes break apart. Um, people say things that upset us you know life is going to throw things at us it's how we grow it's, it's part of our growth it, it it has to be there um but when we're being triggered and you know our emotions are taking over us it's because we're not in control of our emotions so this energy chart is so worth looking up it really is because what it helps you understand is that if you can just start to guide your energy say you find yourself in a place of overwhelm if you can just use your tools, your, your resource kit, your toolbox of meditation and books and reading and you know somebody you can talk to and your coach or your mentor or this podcast to help you move your energy just slightly up to contentment, just staying in that contentment place. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about going into positive or enlightenment or any excitement, you know, just maintaining that contentment, that calm. From there, you're going to have more control over yourself. Now you might spend a day there, you might spend a week there, you might spend two weeks there, but if you can just maintain that and then when you're ready, start to bring your energy back up. You don't need to worry about going from overwhelm right up to positive and like enlightenment, just bringing yourself back up to that calm place. And then you can decide, you know, I'm feeling ready now, I'm gonna just start to raise my energy a bit more. It's such a powerful um, practice. That's such great advice and what you're suggesting though is that we have to be really self-aware internally and so that brings up my question of intuition and how do we tap into that and how do we really listen to it and know that it's intuition and not some external source guiding us so intuitions i describe it as your internal gps system it's your internal gps system it's the system that's in you that um is attached to your feelings. So your intuition will work through your feelings and depending where you're at, you know, we all have abilities. We all have, all have these abilities, you know, me and you is no different. Um, the, your, your, your audience that are listening to the podcast, you know, you guys are no, we're no different. We've all got these abilities. And like you said, it's about your internal awareness, your awareness, your conscious awareness of yourself, your environment, you know, of, of who you are. And so again, through silence meditation, I just encourage you to start to tap into that internal GPS system because with your intuition, when you become aware of it and start to learn how it works for you, um, you find yourself with a whole new tool. Now, feelings, like I said, becoming aware of them, you know, so if you're faced with something that really makes you feel enlightened, that you feel open, if you're with somebody, for example, that you leave that conversation like this, I feel on fire, like I feel, I feel positive, I feel open, I'm learning, you know, that is, that's your internal guide system being like, this person's really, really awesome for you in your life. Mm -hmm. Likewise, if you've got a relationship where you maybe leave there feeling tired, exhausted, like the energy's being drained out of you, this is your intuition telling you that perhaps that person is no longer for you in your life. Perhaps that person isn't serving you and you're not serving them. So that's just one example for where in relationships you can use that. But your intuition is that little voice that comes in your head, your gut speaking. We say about your gut, listen to your gut. You know, that's your intuition. And I promise you, when you start to listen to that more, um, you're going to find decision making a lot easier. You're going to find your awareness of yourself amplify. And you're going to find, again, life takes a whole different shape. 
it's it's such an interesting interesting concept and a lot of times when i have clients come to me and one of the questions that they ask is how do i know like how do i know when my marriage is over how do i know when my relationship isn't serving anymore and i think that that's the perfect answer and usually the conflict or the confusion comes from them looking to external uh sources for the answers and so they're kind of their brain is providing an answer and they're ignoring exactly what you're talking so I think that that's just like really highlights um, such an important point. I, it's such, it's so good. I love it. Thank you. Um, now, what about, so you have your intuition. What about trusting yourself to uh, follow it and know that that's actually really good for you and that your intuition is going to serve the best purpose and, and not have doubt or um, allow sort of the, that to creep in and say, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's really not my intuition. Maybe it's something else. How do you trust your own, your own thoughts and what you want in your heart and what your intuition is telling you? I would like to offer here um, practice. It's practice. And it really, I mean, what it comes down to is practice. This is a lifelong, I look at it as a lifelong practice. You know, I am, we're, we're onions. We're like onions. We've got all these different layers. And the beautiful thing about us is that you peel a layer off and then there's another layer that you've learned about yourself and it's exposed and you get to experience it. And then there's another bit of growth comes and you get to peel another layer off. And the truth is, is that we're designed that way. You know, we're, we're, we're living, breathing, um, animals mammals people we're we're beings with unlimited potential and we truly are this is not this is not woo woo stuff like this is scientifically proven it's back now you know you can do your research this is scientifically proven and i just before i go into this you know i want to touch back is that um know that you're missing out on something if you go with that label of woo woo like there's such uh such a uh, there's a whole world to be discovered here there's a whole world to be discovered of you and so we are we're, we're we're like onions and i just want to offer that first of all because why i offered that was that i want to just let you guys know that it is an ever expanding process this this life thing we call life it's a ever expanding process but there's so much beauty in that because you know you you really really do get to peel the layers of yourself off and in terms of the trust it's practice now i have things come up for me all the time i'll just use my own experience again that that challenge me of course and then i have to tap back into my intuition and and you know my inner power and really work with you know, how is this going to serve me going forward? And am I just needing to lean a little bit more into trust and faith in order to help me move it to the next level? Because we hold ourselves back so much. We hold ourselves back so much because we don't have that belief in ourselves. We hold ourselves back because we think that we can only be capable, um, achieve and be worthy of so much when the truth is there is a whole other dimension out there for us to really tap into it's it's estimated we tap into sort of 10 percent of our potential or something and um, you know from from what is actually out there and i know i'm going off on a little bit of a tangent but it is all connected and so i would just encourage you to start to practice it and with each level of life that you know you you come into you move into um practice trusting yourself a little more and have have a moment of truth with yourself, you know, especially when it comes to relationships. You know, I was in this place when my when my um, engagement was falling apart. I had to really be honest and truthful with myself. You know, is this serving me? Like, am I? Is this serving me? Is this serving him? Um, and the truth was, is that I was living a life that was no longer mine for living. I was keeping myself stuck in a life that was no longer mine for living. Um, and so what I did is I started to tap more into my intuition. I started to tap more into my truth. I started to listen to my gut and that little voice that was going on in my mind. I started to lean more into my heart and move away from my head because our head wants to rule the roost, of course. And we do, we listen to our logic mind when we can actually choose to start to listen more to our heart, which is where our truth lies. You know, when we can start to connect more there and listen to actually who we are and what's going to serve us going forward, that would be my advice. Um, 
one size doesn't fit all and you know it's going to be a unique process and journey for each and every one of you um, but really just start to have that belief in who you are what you're capable of start to listen more to your gut and who you are internally and practice with each level of life leaning a little bit more into that trust and that faith um, that you have available for you um, to really open up a, a whole different ball game for you. And, and turn down the noise, right? Mm -hmm. All of the other yeah. noise out there. So um, tell me a little bit about the Consciousness Collective. This is a new initiative you just launched. And it's so exciting. Yeah, so really interesting story. And again, this is actually such a good um, conversation to have in the back of what we've just spoken about. So um, I've been in the coaching and you know teaching space for a little while now. Um, and I was connected with a um, gentleman um, in Scotland um, through a, a conference. And we got to know each other through the professional world. And um, he kept speaking about this lady called Jess, kept speaking about this lady called Jess. And um, kept speaking about her, kept speaking about her. And then we eventually crossed paths last November um, with our mutual friend, his name's Matt. And so me and Jess were connected and the Consciousness Collective started off as an event. So it started off as an event that was to be held in London. And the event was going to be, well, hopefully, hopefully we'll still go ahead, but it was going to be an event. Um, but what happened was this global situation obviously took off. And I just finished a call to Jess and I went to the toilet. And this is this is this is a great example of you know your intuition um being more connected to your your spirituality and and I what I say source. Um and so I was I was in the bathroom and I literally just got this message like you have to take action now. You have to take action now, like you cannot wait until October you have to take action now so I came out the toilet got on the phone to Jess I was like Jess we have to take action now like the conscious collectives got we have to take this forward now so we did um and it's honestly been in my professional experience it's honestly been one of the most empowering powerful um opportunities of my life where I've had to really dive into my trust my faith and who I am and um, the potential that you know there's something connecting us all and something a lot bigger like I had to really take a deep dive into that because what happened was that really we've created something that would have probably before taken me a good year we've done it in about seven weeks um, and I can say that honestly, hand on heart, it's just been one of the most amazing experiences. But what we've both done is we have chosen to step more into that, what I've just spoken about, that trust, that faith, listening to that guidance that, that, that we're, we're, we're experiencing. And, you know, that's just the little gentle nudges and guides that we get along the way. Um, so what we did is we decided to go online and we started running networking events, which of course we'd love to open that up. They're free to attend. Uh, we run them twice a week um, on a Wednesday and Thursday. Um, we started running networking events and then we've just launched our members community. So we have ladies from the US, from Canada, from Russia, from Australia and all over the UK. Um, so this is a members community. We are only opening our doors at a certain point of the year. Um, so we're just we're just closing the doors uh, today. The doors close and we kick off our first um, self mastery session later on today. Um, but it's a really exciting process. So basically, what we're doing is we are um, in the process of creating something that I know is going to impact on a lot of people and it already is and we're seeing that proof we're creating a platform and a community base now yes it's me and Jess that's kicking this off but it's so much bigger than us it really really is and we've seen that from the start and um, we are all about supporting individuals to raise their consciousness we have created an elevated and empowered community um, and you know what really excites me is that from the word go we've made the decision that this is about legacy because if we really want to see the change that we want to see in this world of us all being more aware uh, of the conscious beings that we are everything we do is is within the conscious collectives backed by science 
and also bringing people together from all around the world who are going to create you know their own communities and, and create impact that way um, we understood that it had to be way bigger than us and so legacy has been absolutely the core of our values and everything that we've we've done since then so that's a little bit about who we are and what we're doing. This this year is very much about just that deep dive on our community. And um, we will be opening up towards the end of this year again for another intake. Um, so, you know, if you're listening to this and you're keen to find out, you can connect. Likewise, the networking events, we'd love to welcome you guys on. There's been some amazing things happening there. And the other side of what we're doing is we've already... Um, create a foundation so from the word go we create a foundation we've called it teach love and um, we've got a huge vision for that as well um, and this is going to be more focused towards the youth of today again legacy they're they're the ones that are going to change and um, change this world going forward so we've made some really interesting connections with some individuals in the US and um, who are doing amazing things within their schools principals uh, community called off school grounds um, and we actually kick off our pilot project next week where we're connecting um, youths um, from across the world. So we're kicking off with the UK and the US. Um, we've created the platform, but we're gonna let these guys run it and see where it goes. Um, and the idea is we'll be taking this project to, into schools um, eventually. So that's a little bit of an overview with what we're doing. That, that's amazing. So how do we connect with you and find you? Yeah, amazing. Thank you so much. So my Instagram is Rachel J. Ross Smith. Um, you'll also get the handle for um, the Conscious Collective there as well. Um, my email is rachel.rosssmith at gmail.com. Um, and you can find me on Facebook as well, Rachel Ross Smith Coaching. Um, and of course, anything I can offer, I'm, I'm here for you. And as always, all of that information will be in the show notes. So Thank you so much, Rachel. Everything that you said just really like it resonates with me. And I know that there's going to be listeners out there who really um, feel everything too and can feel your energy. So it's brilliant and it has absolutely nothing to do with your accent, even though that's cool <laughs> too. <laughs> so thank you. And thank thanks you. everyone for tuning in. Yay. Awesome. Hold on a